I would like to introduce about the destruction of local cancer tissue and GCMUF-based immunotherapy from now. It is a pleasure to be present here to talk about immunotherapy-based cancer treatments in Japan. The key concept of cancer therapy I want to discuss is the destruction of local cancer tissue in combination with immunotherapy. The targeted degradation of local cancer tissue, along with minimal side effects and selective killing of cancer cells, is important. Therefore, we have devised sonophotodynamic therapy, a promising treatment comprising sonophotodynamic therapy, high-intensity focused ultrasound, and tumor-treating field-guided electrocapacitive cancer therapy in combination with GCMUF-based immunotherapy. We are confident that GCMUF-based immunotherapy will contribute not only to cancer treatment, but also in mitigating many infectious diseases and immune dysfunction. This figure outlines our aim of harnessing the human body's biochemistry to produce an autologous cancer vaccine. Ultrasound and light and electric fields are used to target and destroy cancer cells, which scatter cancer antigens in the body. This treatment is non-toxic and painless, thereby allowing it to be used frequently for cancer patients. Simultaneously, GCMUF-based immunotherapy is used to stimulate antigen-presenting cells along with T-lymphocytes and B-lymphocytes to attack cancer cells. Saisame array group are using three methods, destruction of local cancer tissue, immunotherapy, and supportive therapy to treating patient. These are the pictures of devices that we use at Saisame array. We are confident that GCMUF-based immunotherapy will contribute not only to cancer treatment, but also in mitigating many infectious diseases and immune dysfunction. Sonodynamic therapy is a new cancer modality, which has a huge potential in treating cancer. Compared with photodynamic therapy, sonodynamic therapy has the advantage of ultrasound penetrating deeply into the body. As you can see, we use low-intensity ultrasound to activate sensitizers in combination with ozone therapy or hyperbaric oxygen chamber to increase oxygenation in cancer tissue. Ultrasound is a physical energy that causes ultrasound cavitation, i.e. the formation of microbubbles when pressure is relatively low. This usually occurs when a liquid undergoes rapid changes in pressure, alternating between high and low pressure. As the microbubbles increase in size and finally explode, they generate shock waves. Photosensitizers and sonosensitizers are basically non-toxic and are preferentially taken up by cancer cells. Energy causes the activation of sonosensitizers, producing singlet oxygen and free radical oxygen in cancer cells and leading to coagulative necrosis. This video documents the use of sonodynamic therapy for treating a patient with a recurrence of triple negative breast cancer. First, treatment areas are marked after checking previous imaging pictures of the patient. Subsequently, ultrasound is applied to the treatment areas. This is an ultrasound-guided HIFU system at our Kobe clinic. HIFU is regarded as a minimally invasive, non-invasive therapy that can be used repeatedly. Principles of HIFU Therapy System This system has the ability to deliver high-intensity focused ultrasound from an external source deep into the tissues with a large convergence angle. The focus is oval in shape and is approximately 10 mm wide and 3 mm in diameter with an 80 degree convergence angle. The tissue temperature reaches over 60 degrees Celsius within seconds causing coagulative necrosis within the next few seconds. HIFU therapeutic effects with respect to tissues include two biological actions, thermal and non-thermal. The thermal effect of HIFU involves the generation of a temperature greater than 60 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, in a small targeted area. The non-thermal effect of HIFU involves the generation of microbubbles in the body called cavitation. In general, HIFU treatment requires approximately one hour for a single sitting, which is usually performed twice. Anesthetic is usually not administered. HIFU treatment can be used frequently and does not generally require hospitalization. HIFU treatment indications include uterine fibroids, myoma, liver, breast, kidney, pancreatic, and prostate cancers, soft tissue sarcoma, bone tumors, this video documents HIFU therapy in treating a patient with pancreatic cancer having liver metastasis. 
First, ultrasound is used to detect the tumors while the patient takes deep breaths. Subsequently, HIFU is used. The energy level of HIFU is approximately 1,000 times higher than that of an ultrasound device used for imaging. What is Tumor Treating Fields TTF Therapy? TTF therapy is a type of electric field therapy that uses low-intensity electric fields to suppress cancer cell proliferation in the body. This treatment is over a decade old. The electric fields it generates in the human body interfere with cancer cell division, triggering apoptosis, cell death. Advanced Tumor Treating Fields Electrocapacitive Cancer Therapy ECCT equipment consists of apparel and an oscillator as shown in the picture. ECCT equipment vary depending on the tumor location and body size. What are electric fields? Electric field comprises a field of forces that attract bodies with electrical charge. Tumor treating electric fields disrupt cell division through physical interaction with key molecules during mitosis. Therefore, the best way to understand an electric field is to think of gravity, which is also a field of forces. Electric fields interfere with cell division. In this figure, you can see the division of a cell into two cells. The electric fields are even in undivided cells, but not in dividing cells. Therefore, the polymerization of the microtubule triggers spindle formation, leading to mitotic arrest. As the cell division is occurring, the cell takes a sandglass-type shape. This causes the electric field distribution to become uneven, causing apoptosis in cancer cells. The pictures in left side are indication of immunohistochemical staining of abnormal mitotic figures in TTF-treated cultures. Green is microtubules, red is actin, and blue is DNA. The picture in right side is indicating a hallmark of apoptosis. Anexin is staining by red. So what is the difference between ECCT and TTF? ECCT includes the following. Direct current, DC pulse, complete non-contact, penetration through layers of air, low voltage, less than 30 VPP, low frequency, less than 100 kilohertz. Effectiveness, particularly for superficial or interfacial tumors, affordability. TTF includes the following. Alternating current, AC, use of high conductive ceramic electrodes with direct contact to skin, without hair, no air layer permitted, higher voltages, greater than 50 volts, intermediate frequency, no effectiveness for superficial tumors, extremely high cost, frequent dermatitis as a side effect. GCMUF stands for GC protein-derived macrophage activating factor. To date, three types of GCMUF have been developed in Japan since the development of the first generation GCMUF in 1991. With the following slides, I will be explaining a little bit about macrophages and the different types of GCMUF. Tomorrow, I intend to talk about GCMUF immunotherapy in further detail. First generation GCMUF was developed by Dr. Yamamoto in 1991. This was Dr. Yamamoto's achievement, accomplished in collaboration with the Tokushima University. However, we do not use first generation GCMUF for clinical applications in Japan anymore because of its low concentration, low stability, and risk of cross contamination, especially when vitamin D3 affinity column is used repeatedly. Therefore, I believe that this column needs to be disposable. Second generation GCMUF was developed by Saisei Mirai and Tokushima University in 2010. The advantages of second generation GCMUF are high concentration, 1500 NG per 0.5 milliliter per dose, and significantly high stability and microphage activating capability. Oral GCMUF was developed by Saisei Mirai and Tokushima University in 2014. It is derived from bovine colostrum, a 1 mg capsule has activity equivalent to that of 100 NG purified GCMUF. An enteric, acid-resistant capsule is used for oral administration to target the Peyer's patches in the gut. Powder form oral GCMUF is used for sublingual administration in the mouth. I would like to add that colostrum muff is permitted as a food product in Japan. This graph compares the three types of GCMUF in a clinical setting. 
First-generation GC Muff exhibits a much lower concentration because of the purification process. Without albumin and uric acid, purified GC Muff is considerably less stable. White blood cells, also called leukocytes, are found throughout the body, including in the blood and lymphatic system, and are essential for protecting against infections and foreign material. Neutrophils and monocytes are phagocytes. Lymphocytes comprise B cells, T cells, and NK cells. Monocytes have a longer lifespan than other leukocytes. Dendritic cells, macrophages, and B lymphocytes are called antigen-presenting cells, which basically have the same function. Three types of lymphocyte cell therapies, constituting different cultivation methods, are offered at Say Sai Marais. NK cells have a shorter half-life than adult and naive T cells. Because naive T cells have a long half-life, we combine them with NK cells and adult T cells. Second generation GCMUF can affect dendritic cells. Recently, we observed that GCMUF increases the number of monocytes in the blood and the rate of dendritic cell maturation in vitro. The number of monocytes in a patient generally increases during the early stages of GCMUF therapy, which is an indication of a good response to the treatment. Cancer vaccines come in several forms and are different from the vaccines against viruses. Cancer vaccines are designed to stimulate the immune system to attack cancer cells that already exist. In Japan, cancer vaccines are categorized into autologous vaccines, which are derived from a patient's own formulin-fixed tumor tissue and dendritic cell therapy, which uses artificial antigens, such as WT1, MUC1, and tumor lysate. Vaccines are often combined with adjuvants, which help boost the immune response even further. Autologous cancer vaccine is derived from formulin-fixed, paraffin-embedded tissue fragments derived from a patient's own cancer. The vaccine contains all the unknown cancer-associated antigens unique to a particular patient. Such vaccine has been found to exhibit potential in suppressing recurrence, preventing metastasis, and treating residual cancer cells of several human cancer types after surgical resection. This diagram depicts the preparation of autologous cancer vaccine. Following surgery, more than 2 grams of cancer tissue is used to elicit adequate immune response. We use adjuvants such as tuberculin and TUMP. The prepared vaccine needs to be injected every 1 to 2 weeks. This diagram depicts the preparation of dendritic cell vaccines. First, the patient's blood is sampled and monocytes are cultivated in a cell processing center. Second, immature dendritic cells are isolated and mixed with tumor lysate or artificial antigens. Finally, mature antigen-presenting dendritic cells are injected subcutaneously near the lymph nodes that are close to the cancer. Acquired gene mutations are the most common cause of cancer. Although they occur because of damage accumulated by genes during a person's lifespan, they are generally not hereditary. Cancer gene therapy involves using normal genes to destroy cancer cells. The gene is usually transported to the targeted cancer cells by a vector. The most common types of carriers used in gene therapy are viruses. In other words, gene therapy attempts to introduce genetic material, DNA or RNA, into living cancer cells in order to cause apoptosis. The viruses are inactivated so that they cannot cause serious disease, but they may still cause flu-like symptoms. P53, BRCA1, and BRCA2 are examples of tumor suppressor genes. The most commonly mutated gene in cancer patients is P53. In fact, more than 50% of all cancers involve a missing or damaged P53, and most P53 mutations are acquired mutations. P53 is a 53K DA tumor suppressor protein that prevents cell cycle progression or induces apoptosis in cells with damaged DNA. DNA damage increases the production of P53 protein, leading to cell cycle arrest in G1S or G2M phase and eventually DNA repair. Increased levels of P53 trigger the production of P21, which is an inhibitor of CDK2 and CDC2. CDK2 and CDC2 control the cell cycle checkpoints, and their inhibition prevents the progression from G1S phase and G2M phase. 
In summary, the human P53 is the most frequently mutated gene in cancer, and it affects G1S and G2M phase arrest, along with DNA repair when DNA damage is not severe, which is depicted in this diagram. Fever can be harnessed as a remedy for cancer. Historically, it is well known that spontaneous tumor remissions are associated with feverish illness and infection. Cancer patients often have a striking lack of feverish illness in their history. Fever therapy can produce tumor response. Two cases were reported by Mail Online in September 2010 that claimed fever naturalized blood cancer. Jordan baffled doctors when his leukemia vanished. New evidence suggests a remarkable explanation. Can a fever cure cancer? Peter Crane's incurable blood cancer disappeared without any treatment. Can fever cure cancer? This is a very important question to me, and I can say that the answer is yes, it is possible. An infection serious enough to provoke a fever response can push the body's immune system into a high-powered, hypersensitive state. Because cancer cells are slightly different from normal, healthy cells, the immune system may recognize and attack them as though they are infectious invaders. The high temperature plays a role in attacking and destroying the cancer cells. William B. Coley, a father of immunotherapy, actually utilized and improved cancer treatment by fever. Spontaneous tumor regression is followed by bacterial, fungal, viral, or protozoal infections. Dr. Coley took advantage of this natural phenomenon for developing a killed bacterial vaccine for cancer in the late 1800s. He observed that inducing a fever was crucial for tumor regression. Killed bacterial treatments, Coley's vaccines, Streptococcus pyrogenes, Serratia marcescens. About Coley's vaccine and his life. In 1890, his first patient was a 17-year-old woman with malignant osteosarcoma on the right forearm. She has undergone operation, but unfortunately, she died about two months later. From this event, Dr. Corey looked up, began looking for better treatment. He found a record of a patient having the egg size of cancer, sarcoma, on the left face. He underwent surgery twice, but cancer recurred. No one think he has the chance to healing. However, he raised a high fever, and surprisingly, the cancer, sarcoma, became smaller, and eventually, it completely disappeared. Dr. Corey focused on this fact and succeeded in developing and manufacturing the Corey vaccine. Corey vaccine is a historical vaccine that can obtain the same effect as when it did not develop disease. More than 1,000 patients were treated with Corey vaccine while Dr. Corey was alive. We have been using Coley's vaccines for cancer patients for more than seven years. Coley vaccine administration leads to softening of the tumor. Second generation GCMUF will activate both immunotherapy and local control. This is our key strategy for cancer therapy. Of all therapies, second generation GCMUF is the most important one. Recently, we changed the second-generation GCMUF protocol for cancer patients by increasing the dose of GCMUF from 0.5 milliliters to 1.0 milliliters of daily injections, which enabled us to obtain much better results. I hope that our cancer treatment can control or cure many patients' cancers. Cancers. These are the facilities who participated in the co-research. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention.